When it comes to classic creeps, the gang's all here. Here's your look at the retro go-go Ghoulsville Ghoul Gang. Straight from the graveyard in sickly colors of decay, they're rad and rotten and will never be forgotten. Before we get down to looking at the gang of Ghoulsville, I suppose the first thing we probably should do is figure out how tall these collectibles stand. In all the cases, actually, all three of these figures will come in three different color combinations, or three different colorways. We'll talk more about that in a second. But in the meantime, we're going to grab the ruler, put it right to the very top, in this case of Bela Lugosi Dracula. They're all going to be roughly the same size, although I think Gulina, that is her name, is the tallest of the three. In the meantime, though, like I said, we're going to put it up to the top of Dracula's head. The figure stands five inches in height, or about 12 and a half centimeters tall. In all three of the cases of the desktop tiny terrors, they come included with a designated display stand. Although the stands seem to be identical to one another, we're going to go ahead and just remove Bela Lugosi's Dracula so you can see what the display base looks like. Sort of a cobblestone top with two very noticeable pegs on the top of that that's going to plug into the underside of the figure's feet. On the front, in this case, we see Bela Lugosi is Dracula, and the same thing is present on the other side as well. Now, like I said, all three of the figures, collectibles, do come included with the same type of display stand. But in some of the cases, actually, like Ghoulina and Frankenstein, you'll see it says Ghoulsville on the front and their names featured on the back. But anyways, like I said, it just plugs onto the bottom of Dracula's feet. Fairly easy, although you have to kind of like line the feet up accordingly to make sure everything's fitting snug in place and attaching properly to the display stand. Sometimes it has more of a trouble than others. Uh, you know what, we'll just leave it off for the time being. We'll go back to that in a second. Now here in a case, we've got Bela Lugosi Dracula, nicely represented here as a smaller collectible figure. As I mentioned before, it does have three different colorway options. I'm just going to bring in the box here so you can see what they look like here. Now I went with the totally gnarly Dracula, but there's also Fresh from the Crypt, more of a color version of Dracula. Or if you prefer your black and white Dracula, there's the Midnight Movie version of it. But the sculpting is the same in all three. I'm kind of thinking I might lean to then picking up the black and white versions, because I think these would also look quite nice in black and white. And again, all three of these, I picked these up over, by the way, at Entertainment Earth's website, which I think they have several of the colorways available, if you guys are interested to pick these up for yourself. Anyways, though, we'll move the box out of the way and get a closer look. I gotta say again, like, the likeness is pretty much there when it comes to Bela Lugosi. The colors are a little jarring because, of course, this is the more gnarlier looking colors. So, like, things like his eyes, for example, are sort of pulsating in blue. His fingers, as well, match the same type of blue. It almost looks like they're frostbitten. And when it comes to his outfit, his jacket, as well as lower pants and interior of cape, is kind of more of a dark pink color, with the back of the cape actually being a darker purple. Uh, the plastic itself is pretty soft in the case of the cape and pretty durable when it comes to the rest of the body. He's pre-posed for the obvious reasons then. He doesn't have any articulation to speak of. It would kind of been fun if these could have had articulation in the heads. But other than that, I really like the look here of Dracula. Dedicating myself to actually getting this on the display stand. Again, lining everything up here. It's hard when you're really unable to see where the holes are going. Let's again line everything up here plug Dracula into his display stand. Did I get it in all the way? I don't think I did. Yeah, lining up the hole there. There we go. And there's Dracula. I don't think I have... Hold on a second. I don't think I have that. There we go. Fully in place. So there's Dracula. And then we'll have a closer look now at Frankenstein, or Frankenstein's monster. Again, I wanted to bring the packaging in, though. The packaging doesn't change too much in the sense that the colorways are going to be pretty much the same. So, like, there's a totally gnarly version of Frankenstein. In this case, I actually got the forever filthy uh, Frankenstein, which is actually more closer to resembling his colors. And then there's the midnight movie version of Frankenstein, which, again, if you like the silver screen look of them, it's also available there as well. Move the box out of the way. Again, in this case, Frankenstein doesn't have his name featured on both the sides. The one side has Ghoulsville, while on the back of it is also Ghoulsville. I think for some reason I thought their names were on there as well, but not the case here of Frankenstein's monster. It says Ghoulsville on both the sides, which would be the case as well for Ghoulina. 
nicely sculpted face. It bears less the resemblance of Boris Karloff. We're basically just getting a more stylized design of Frankenstein's monster. I'm not sure why they didn't have, maybe they didn't have the likenesses, likeness license rights available, whereas they would be able to do that with maybe uh, Bella Lugosi. But still, I like the fact it has a like cartoon look to Frankenstein. You can see all the little staples on the side of his face, not only as well, but the little plugs there, the little sockets on the bottoms of his next. And then, of course, what's interesting about this one is on the back, there's a keyhole. There's no key that comes included with it. So it's kind of interesting. Is this the place where Frankenstein himself would actually open this up to check out the interior contents of the monster's head? Maybe this is how he actually puts the brain in. But yeah, the bolts are nicely painted there in silver. The silver, of course, staples, at least on the one side and along the top there as well. It replicates nicely the way that Frankenstein would look without, again, bearing a resemblance to Boris Karloff. Again, the figure is removable from his display stand. These pegs, I've noticed, though, are much longer than the one came included with Bella Lugosi. Not really sure why. I mean, you would think that they would be the same length, and then they would just be able to universally use the dis same display stands with all the cases. The colors, again, are nice. You've got the more airbrushing, darker green down below on the ends of the fingers, more lighter green as we work our way up. There's a little bit of darker green around the areas of the eyes as well. Again, I kind of wish that this could have bared more of the resemblance of Boris Karloff, but still, it's a nice-looking little Frankenstein monster. Then we can move on to Gulina. I just love that name. Picking the figure up again, correcting myself. The name isn't featured on the back of the display stand. Once again, you got Ghoulsville, but attaches the exact same way. Very large pegs. These pegs seem to be the same ones used for Frankenstein's monster. And again, you just plug in at the bottom of it. I'm not sure, again, why Bella Lugosi had to have a completely different one, but still, we'll bring in the box so you guys can see there's the different options available. This, in this case, I picked up the Forever Filthy, I think I actually did, yeah, the Forever Filthy version, which basically just gives us a more accurate color of what this thing would look like. There is also a totally gnarly version, I love the look of that Gulina. And then again, if you like the silver screen version, there's a black and white variant of this as well. Um, down below, there's a little bit of an advertisement. Beware Ghoul Gang member number one, Little Frankie, is on the loose, available in three colorways. When I did pick these up over on Entertainment Earth's website, I noticed that there was availability sort of sporadically. These were the ones I found at the time, so I picked these up, and I don't think they had yet the silver screen versions or the midnight viewing versions of them. Those would be definitely, again, ones I would consider picking up. But Ghoulina looks nice. A little bit of blood trickling down the bottom of her chin. You can see exposed fangs telling us that she is, in fact, a vampire. Probably one telltale sign would be also the fact that she does have wings, which are softer, softer plastic on the back of her hair here. She's nicely sculpted with sort of her hands up like she's lunging towards you. The coloring again on her face, you've got some nice eyeshadow done in blue. Very sharp black panel lining, not only for the eyes, but as well as the eyebrows. She's very, again, nicely looking, nice sculpted collectible. Again, there's no articulation to speak of on any of these. The whole idea is that they're collectible pieces that you're going to be putting at your desktop. But, you know, again, I think the problem that I'm now going to be facing, something I was really worried about when I was first putting these into my shopping cart over on Entertainment Earth, was I feel like now I'm going to be going down the rabbit hole. I mean, just again, looking at the colorways available in the back of the box, I think I am going to probably see if I can track down the midnight movie view uh, versions of all of these figures, especially on Ghoulina. I really like the darker colors that they've used for her eyeshadow. And again, a more starker black that they've used for the majority of her body. Again, these are available over on Entertainment Earth's website. So again, I'll provide the link down below in the comment in the video description, I should say. And again, I think they have by now all of the different colorways available availability will be determined by how popular these are. But I can understand certainly why people of fans, certainly of universal monsters would be wanting to track these down. While some of the resemblance a little bit better, like on the Bella Lugosi versus the Ghoulina and Frankenstein, which are clearly more cartoonier versions of them. I think they really look nice and definitely ones I would be putting on my desk. Not only has Retro Agogo produced these tiny little terror collectibles, but they've also produced a mask set that's out there as well for some of the Universal Monsters. The masks, I think, also come included with like a posable piece that you can put up, like, for example, Halloween on your front door. Those cardboard standees that have those fold-back fasteners, you know, those fold-back fasteners you had in public school when you wanted to make arms articulated? Yeah, they're making those as well, which I think I might even decide to pick up those also. Oh, such a rabbit hole I'm going to find myself going down. But I like the look of these. 
You may not decide for yourself to pick up all three colorways for each of the characters, but I think there might be ones that you may pick up over the others. Like, for example, I think you're probably going to want to get the color version and maybe the Midnight Movie. I can't speak for you, of course. I'm probably more so speaking for myself. I'm totally going to probably buy all three of them for each of the figures. But let me know down below in the comments section which of the three figures that we looked at of the Tiny Tears, which ones were your favorites? Always like reading your comments down below. And again, if you are interested to pick these ones up for yourself, what availability there is over on their website, I can provide the link down below in the video description to Entertainment Earth where I found these for myself. If you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification. So yes, yes, you're getting those friendly 411s of whenever new videos are going to be popping up. And just a friendly 411 from the person that's behind the camera, making sure you're, yes, keeping your peepers peeled because there's definitely going to be a lot more video content coming your way in the not so distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.